effective April 3, 1993, Minnesota Home Care Hospice Program Statutes 144A.43 to 144A.49 authorized the Minnesota Department of Health to license most providers of home care and hospice services, including private businesses, nonprofit organizations, and governmental agencies. Hello, I'm Jeanette Mefford with Mefford Knudsen and Associates, consultants to home health care businesses. I'd like to welcome you to orientation to home care requirements. We've put this video together to assist you in complying with the licensure rule regarding orientation to home care requirements. We've tried to organize and present this information so that it's clearly understandable by every person who provides home-based health care services. The rule states that every applicant for license and every person who provides direct care, supervision of direct care, or management of services for a provider must complete an orientation to home care requirements before providing home care services to clients. This orientation must cover the following topics. An overview of the home care statute, the home care bill of rights, client complaints and the procedure for reporting them to the Office of Health Facility Complaints at the Minnesota Department of Health. It must also cover the services of the Ombudsman for Older Minnesotans, reporting the maltreatment of vulnerable minors or adults, and the emergency plan and the use of emergency services. Each provider must retain evidence that all employees and volunteers have completed this requirement. However, agencies may accept written verification of this orientation from another provider. Let's start with an overview of the statute. First, the purpose of licensure. That purpose is threefold. First, to ensure that home care services are provided by qualified personnel. Second, to protect the health, safety, and well-being of home care clients. And third, to provide a quality mechanism for monitoring and responding to problems. This monitoring will be accomplished through routine surveys, those completed in conjunction with the Medicare surveys for Medicare certified agencies, or surveys to investigate a complaint. If an agency is in violation of the rules, fines may be issued. In some situations, the department may suspend, revoke, or refuse to renew a license. Minnesota state licensure rules have many requirements similar to those for Medicare home health certification, but they've also added some requirements, including screening of personnel for criminal convictions, screening employees for tuberculosis, and specific guidelines for handling medications and treatment orders. Medicare regulations apply only to those providers who receive reimbursement from the Medicare medical assistance programs. But all providers, except those exempted by law or rule, must be licensed by the state and comply with the licensure rules. To ensure that home care services are provided by qualified personnel, home health agency employees must be licensed, registered, or certified as required by the state and or must meet the training and evaluation requirements of the licensure rules. To protect the safety of home care clients, all current and prospective employees who have had or will have direct contact with clients in their homes must sign a statement disclosing all crimes except for minor traffic violations of which they've been convicted in any jurisdiction or stating that they have never been convicted of a crime. There are five classes of license, and these are representative of the type and scope of services provided. Class A is a professional home care agency license. Class B is for paraprofessional home care agencies. Class C applies to an individual paraprofessional. Class D is for the hospice program and Class E is the Assisted Living Program License. Class A is a Professional Home Care Agency License. This provider may offer all home care services 
at least one of which is nursing, physical therapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy, nutritional services, medical social services, home health aides, or medical equipment and supplies when they are accompanied by a home care service. These services may be provided in a place of residence, including residential care centers. Class B is a paraprofessional license. This provider offers home care aid and home management services to clients in their places of residence. Class C is an individual paraprofessional license. And this provider may perform home health aid, home care aid, and home management tasks in a place of residence. Class D is a hospice program license. This provider offers palliative and supportive care and services to the terminally ill clients and their families. Services here are provided by a centrally coordinated program that ensures continuity and consistency of home and inpatient care. Services must be available 24 hours a day and may be provided in the client's home, a licensed hospital, nursing home, or a residential hospice facility. Class E is an assisted living program license. This provider may furnish assisted living services. These are individualized home care aid and home management services provided to clients in a residential care center. Some providers will meet the requirements for more than one license. For example, a Class A licensee may also receive a Class D license if they provide both home care and hospice services. The Home Care Bill of Rights. All home care providers, including those exempt from licensure under Minnesota Statute Section 144A.46, must comply with the Home Care Bill of Rights requirements. The purpose of this Bill of Rights is to inform home care clients verbally and in writing of their right to participate in and make informed decisions regarding their care and to provide a mechanism for client complaints or grievances to be addressed and resolved. Now, how is this done? The Bill of Rights must be provided to all home care clients at the time of admission and in advance of care being provided. Agency representatives must review client rights and address with them the mechanism for reporting complaints or concerns. The agency must obtain written documentation from the client that the Bill of Rights was received and reviewed. This documentation must be kept in the client file. 